All right, and welcome back. In this video, we're going to be uh, doing a little bit more um, deburring and prep work for the uh, rudder. Uh, getting closer to being able to finally assemble the uh, skins together. Um, this will be just mostly deburring all of the um, individual pieces you see laying out there on the table. And then also, uh, as you can see now, I'm spray painting, I'm prime, putting primer on the uh, portions of the skins where the, the holes are, are drilled through. Um, and the blue tape on there is protecting the surface area where the double-sided tape will adhere to. Um, as I edit this video, I have just completed the majority of the rudder. I was able to get the um, trailing edge in correctly with the correct tape and uh, just did the double flush uh, riveting, which is a lot easier, at least for me it was a lot easier than it sounded. Um, now as far as if I did it correctly, that uh, remains to be seen. I'm gonna have uh, someone from my EAA chapter come over and take a look just to make sure uh, that everything looks kosher so far. Um, but looking at the trail, you know, looking along the trailing edge, it doesn't seem to have much of a waiver, if any. So I'm actually pretty pleased with how it turned out. And uh, running my finger along the machine head side of the uh, rivets, they seem to be flush mounted pretty well on, on the back side of them as well. So I was pretty impressed. Um, so yeah, now I'm going through and deburring all the holes that uh, I had just match drilled. Um, and I've got the extension on my drill for the deeper bit uh, just to get the motor of the drill out of the way to make it easier to access some of the holes. So um, also other than working on this build, I'm also in the process of trying to modernize my Cherokee. Uh, some may know I've, I've purchased a 1964 Cherokee, uh, Piper Cherokee 235 uh, back in September. And uh, since I purchased it, I've probably put about 50 or 60 hours of flying time on it. Uh, flew up to Oregon and back. It was one of my first major cross-country flights. And I uh, recently just flew over to um, Riverside, California and back with my daughter. And uh, good flying plane. I, I enjoy the heck out of it. But uh, it's definitely got some antiquated instruments. And uh, the panel is it's the original panel. And looking to actually upgrade that and uh, looked into a company that's based out of Wisconsin that uh, specializes in in uh, customized panels and uh, they do mostly experimental work but if you have a mechanic that's not afraid to uh, sign off on the fact that you have a custom-made panel then uh, they can do that as well so that's what I'm gonna have them do I was just looking into it kind of freshly into the idea of, of getting a customized panel so I just wanted to find out some of the basics and you know timeline what the general idea for a budgeted cost would be and and uh, for my panel being it's, it's three separate pieces um, it would run somewhere between sixteen hundred and two thousand dollars which actually is less than what I had imagined it's not that bad so I'm more than likely going to be doing that sometime during the spring it's it's not a it's not an absolute must right now. Um, I've got other things that I can knock out with that kind of money. Uh, specifically, I need to get a uh, an audio panel for my Cherokee. Um, it's got a Mickey Mouse uh, aftermarket intercom system, two-place intercom system for the pilot and co-pilot. But it's a four-seat airplane, so if I have anybody in the back seat, yeah, guess what? They're not going to be part of the conversation. So. I don't like flying with people in the back seat if I can't talk to them, especially if I don't know if they get airsick or not. That's the big part. I don't want to have uh, someone puking in the back of my airplane. That, that would make for a terrible flight. So uh, that's my priority. And then uh, more than likely I'll be looking into uh, getting the panel done sometime in the spring. So anyway, uh, continuing on deburring here, I'm actually going to cut and fast forward uh, cutting out some of the deburring stuff it's boring to watch the same thing over and over and over and so here I just cut forward to uh, get the skins uh, this is deburring 
the skins. Um, you do the same to the inside and outside edges of, of each hole, um, deburring both sides. So that's what I'm doing here, and I'll go through, and I believe I actually cut this short a little bit also and fast forward a little bit. Um, but uh, as I said before, trying to find ways to make it not so monotonous and watching the same thing over and over and over again, you kind of get the idea after the first 10 or 15 seconds. <laughs> so anyway, so that's what I'm doing here, just going through and uh, deburring all the holes that, I, that are going to be matching up. Um, even if I didn't drill the hole, uh, I still want to deburr like these holes here that uh, line up with the stiffener. Those are all machined to the final cut. If you if you recall from the previous video, I didn't have to do any match drilling on those holes, um, but I still want to deburr them just to make sure that even during the manufacturing process, it creates edges. So uh, you go through and just deburr everything, and then flip it over and do the same thing to the other side. And then again, do the same thing to the other skin. So back to the company I was speaking with, uh, talked to them and uh, th he was talking about most of their stuff is for custom work for experimental airplanes. And I let him know that I was building, in the process of building an RV-14. And uh, he made mention that they have a whole bunch of stuff that's specific for the RV-14. Um, and you, I think you'll find that at most uh, aircraft shops, uh, uh, material shops kind of things. Um, the Vans product is, is popular enough that a lot of companies make specific kits for each model of, of, of RV. Um, and he was, he was more than happy to point out some of the things they had there. And it seemed like a pretty neat neat location but uh, they are based out of Wisconsin so anything I get would be a bit of a uh, delay um, I think he said that the process for getting a custom panel is gonna be probably somewhere around six to eight weeks with uh, the number of times they mail a a copy of an unfinished panel to me to kind of match up and, and plan see how I like it before they finalize anything seemed like a good process so we'll we'll I'll get together with my mechanic and see what his idea is as far as what's allowed, what's kosher, and, and uh, what to watch out for. But uh, I would definitely like to modernize the, the instrument panel on the, on the Cherokee. So. And then as I finish out here, uh, I believe the, the next part here would be just to make sure that everything is looking good um, within the next video or two I should start uh, installing the stiffeners and uh, I think I will probably fast forward to that point anyway uh, or at least close to it um, no sense in putting out several videos of the same thing like deburring is obviously necessary but man does it get monotonous <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one short this is gonna be a shorter video um, again, if you get a chance, click that like button for me. I'd appreciate it. And uh, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, by all means, leave them down below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I see it. All right, thanks for watching.